Hey, good morning. Hey, Stephen, what's up? Can you uh, see me? Not yet. Uh, there yeah. we go. Now I can. <laughs> As a picture, it's okay. Yeah, it's good. That's. Let, uh, let me turn off my uh, music. I got. Uh, I listen to classical music every morning. There we go. So we talked uh, six years ago in Berlin. We met up. Uh, we did an interview, and people liked that a lot. And uh, for me, a big honor to have you on my channel and uh, an inspiring experience to talk to you. And uh, you know, I look up to you. Uh, I would love to be in the same shape you are at your age. And uh, that's uh, pretty much the topic I would like to focus on today. Strong and lean over 30, 40, and 50. Well, in my case, over 60. <laughs> and over 60. Right, right. Yeah, correct. <laughs> you know, we, uh, I have a lot of insight on that. And, um, you know, obviously, as you go through it, you start to change your opinions and your ideas and your values. So we can talk a lot about that, too. I mean, most people nowadays, even in their 20s, they're already at a point that their movement is lacking, you know, they're overweight. And, uh, you know, on the other hand, you have people like you that uh, move with grace at age 20, at age 68, 69. And uh, this is one of the topics, one of the reasons I, I chose to, uh, to talk to you today. You were my first, the first guy that I thought of. I read a really great article on your website, uh, I think a, a year ago, which is called, uh, I have a summary of it right here. Uh, it's called Dear Over 45 Trainee. Do you remember that one? Yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> yeah. So uh, did I write? Wh why did you write that article? I, I don't know. Oh, why did I write it? I, I just realized that a lot of people were, were uh, basically destroying themselves with their exercise system. Yeah. See, in my in, in my view, uh, your exercise should build and support your body and prevent injuries, not cause them. So I had run into a bunch of people that were getting hurt with mm -hmm. their exercise programs. And part of it is, I think the reason people get hurt, they, they confuse exercise versus recreation. Mm -hmm. You know, they're two separate things. <clears throat> exercise is not fun. <laughs> recreation is fun. Mm -hmm. I exercise so I can do my recreation more efficiently and safely. But the exercise itself is like brushing your teeth or combing your hair or uh, shaving. Maybe that's a bad analogy with you, but <laughs> 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 but it's just something that you do because it's good for you and you know you should, but not because it's fun or anything like that. You know, this idea of fun is recreational. And yes, there's, uh, well, then you also have to differentiate between what is real exercise. You know, not everything is exercise. Mm -hmm. Exercise is an activity where you rapidly fatigue the involved muscle groups in a safe manner. And you do so with the intent, with the intention of creating this very deep level of fatigue so that you get muscular growth and strength. But, you know, th there's many recreational activities like running or swimming or biking, hiking in the mountains, uh, in my case, <clears throat> jiu-jitsu and wrestling, you know, all these type of things, parkour. <clears throat> They're recreational activities. They may have some exercise benefit, but they don't really, you can't classify them as exercise. Yeah, because yeah, you, you can you do, do you, yeah. Yeah, you do them because they're fun. Yeah, and exactly. you you exercise so that you can do these uh, these activities more efficiently. Mm -hmm. And then you've got like these hybrid crossovers like CrossFit, for example. I don't look at CrossFit as exercise. I look at it as a sport. People compete mm -hmm. at the sport. So, you know, it, it's it's not, it is recreational and people are using exercise like movements as a recreation yeah because like crossfit has it, amazing exercises within it and uh, if you do it safely without a without a timer and you focus on perfect form that's great but uh most crossfitters you know try to get reps for time and technique goes out the window and uh their pull-ups are like you know for me elbow destroyers <laughs> the way they do them elbow destroyer. that's yeah. a good one man 
And, uh, and, and I and I say this, and <laughs> my daughter is an amazing crossfitter, <laughs> mm. Savannah. I mean, how many women do you know that can do 16 pull-ups, but not kipping, not kipping, no. regular? Yeah, that's pretty impressive. Or can climb a rope three times in succession with no legs. Mm -hmm. she, she just sets the um, Pennsylvania State Powerlifting Championship. She's squatting, uh, I don't know what it is in kilos, but uh, she's deadlifting 335, squatting 315, and bench yeah. pressing 205. And she looks, you know, very attractive. But back to exercise, a lot of people mistake the idea that watching the weights go up and down, mm. the amount of weight, the number of repetitions is the goal. And they're always trying to increase the weight, trying to increase reps. But that's wrong-mindedness. The, that is not the goal. That's that's like a secondary goal that happens, but the true goal is muscular fatigue. You want to do it in the most efficient manner possible. And here's where I've really changed my ideas. For a lot of guys are chasing big weights. And yes, if you're a power lifter, Olympic weightlifter, you got to chase the big weights. If you're a kettlebell sport athlete, you're always chasing more repetition. But in truth, if you're training for health and longevity and wellness, those things don't matter at all. What I'm really trying to do is create fatigue in the most efficient manner possible. And a really clever fellow can use a relatively light weight and create this fatigue really quickly. Because your muscles don't really know how much weight they're lifting. The uh, recent, there's been so much exciting research. James Steele, James Fisher, it seems like the the amount of weight just doesn't seem to matter. Mm -hmm. You can get equally strong. Now, when I say strong, I'm not talking about demonstrating strength. That's that's another misconception. Your ability to demonstrate a one arm chin up, or a one arm handstand, or a pistol squat, or a heavy bench press is that that's a demonstration of strength. Those things are not necessarily the best way to build general strength. General strength, uh, it, it transfers to every single activity you do. And you can build tremendous general strength using relatively light, light weight, even just your body weight, or, e or even no movement at all with isometrics. Uh, I've been really getting isometrics. Uh, uh, this would explain a lot. Uh, in one study that uh, uh, James Fisher did, uh, they looked at guys doing lightweight, high reps which we, we were always told is for endurance. Yeah. <laughs> and guys using medium weight, medium reps, we were always told for hypertrophy. And then there was guys using really heavy weight for low reps. We were told this is the way you train for strength. What they found in this study was that everyone got equally strong across the board. So if you want, now that doesn't mean that you can do push-ups and have a big bench rep. Mm-hmm. If you want to be good at the bench, you got to practice it. Yeah. But as far as your transferable strength to jujitsu, it would be just as good as the guy with the heavy bench ball. Yeah. And you've had this experience on the mat, you know, big weightlifter guys, they don't even feel that strong sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I had this little guy, a uh, little gymnast guy, maybe weighed 130 pounds soaking wet. And this guy was freakishly strong. And all he ever did was just, you know, lift his own little body weight. But he just had, you know, the the leverage. So that, you know, it would explain like guys like Herschel Walker, you know, that do like thousands of repetitions of push ups and has like this phenomenal physique, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And that would be explain, yeah. because it just doesn't matter. As long as you're working hard, it doesn't matter. Exactly. Light weight, high reps, medium yeah. weight, medium reps, heavy yeah. weight, it doesn't matter. As you're going to get strong. Close to failure. As long yeah. As and yeah, well, that's the key. You got to work really, really hard. Yeah. 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 And uh, that, that's come, I mean, that's been my experience. I train mainly with boat weight. Uh, I do boat weight based workout routines. You know, I do use some slam bows, uh, sometimes uh, simple stuff like jumping ropes. But, uh, you know, you really don't need a lot more than your own boat weight when we're talking about 
getting strong and lean, uh, not to look like a bodybuilder, but to be healthy in the long run. When we're talking about uh, strength training for longevity. And, you know, if you manage to move your own body uh, efficiently and you're really strong and you have really high levels of relative strength, I mean, that is the most important thing, right? When it comes to longevity and strength training. It's not about moving a lot of weight, moving big dumbbells, uh, it's about muscle tension because your body doesn't understand weights. It understands muscle. It understands muscle tension. And what I tell people always is, you know, okay, we do focus on getting some reps. We do focus on getting at least six pull-ups in the beginning and using clean form. But after that, what I tell them is, I don't really want a lot of more reps. I want you to make each rep more difficult by using better form, by using more mind-to-muscle connection. And you know, because that way we can uh, decrease. Uh, friction in the joints and we can still uh, work close to failure and get strong and get healthy. Well, that, that's the thing uh, with a lot of young guys, you know, they, uh, for, first of all, uh, I'd like to address, most people couldn't look like a bodybuilder even if they wanted to. Yeah. There's only a very, very, very small segment of the population that could ever look like these uh, professional bodybuilders. Mm -hmm. They are basically genetically, genetic freaks, really. Mm -hmm. And they would look better than most people, even if they didn't lift weights at all. You know, I, I met a guy the other day at the supermarket and um, I said, wow, what do you do? And he says, nothing. I said, really? <laughs> and this guy's arms and forearms and chest look amazingly massive. And he didn't even work at all. He said, yeah, I have a brother that looks, you know, just like me. So, you know, you can't beat genetics. Yeah. yeah. Now, I'm not saying that these really muscular bodybuilders don't work hard. I'm not saying it's all genetics. Uh, absolutely not. Of course, they put their time into the gym. But for the average person, no matter what you do, you're never going to look like that. But my point is, with exercise, you want it to be safe. There's... Uh, there really is wear and tear in the joints over the years. And if you're doing questionable technique or you're using a huge volume of exercise, trying to work out every day uh, and so forth, you're going to really erode your uh, your muscle and your your joints and your connective tissue over time. And you're, you're going to end up with a lot of osteoarthritis and aches and pains. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that, that, I, I found that I was going that direction. I really reversed direction very quickly. I, I stopped overtraining. I got very strict with my form and my technique. In fact, I use a technique called super slow. I really like slow, high tension reps. I just find it just feels so much better in my joints. And I stopped chasing big weight. That doesn't mean I don't work out hard, mm -hmm. but a clever fellow can figure out how to work out hard with a relatively light weight. And not do such excessive repetitions and, and just take more rest, you know, in between sessions to allow your body to heal and recuperate. Because there, you really, you know, young guys hear this and they, they say, yeah, blah, 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 you know. They, no one thinks it's going to happen to them, but <laughs> there, there's a reason why there's a due date on uh, cottage cheese and yogurt, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah everything has an expiration date <laughs> yeah see I, I was really lucky to have some really good mentors you know mm -hmm. got older guys and um from from a fairly early age i i started playing the long game mm -hmm. in my in my in my uh, mid-30s when i was about your age i started playing the long game i realized wow i'm training like a kamikaze you know i'm not gonna last i mean i was doing some pretty questionable stuff and I decided, you know what? I'm going to just really look at the healthiest people I know, the older guys that have made it through that are still really fit, and look at what they did and listen to some of the things they said. And, you know, like the one mentor I was telling you about, they got me started my first job, this Dr. Greg Ellis. He, uh, he used to say to me, look, anyone could be something at 30 or 40, 50. You know, anyone can, you know, look great at 50 years old. But how many guys do you see look great at 80 years? Yeah. And that was his goal. So that that sort of became my goal. I want to look great at 80. I want to still be able to move if I, you know, God willing, 90 or even 100, you know? Yeah, yeah. 
And I, I think the single most important thing that your listeners can do to make that dream happen is don't get overweight. Don't get fat. That's the number one killer. Uh, it creates almost every kind of health problem you can imagine. That visceral fat in the abdominals. You just got to diet it off. There's no getting around it. You can't exercise fat off, not efficient. You got to diet. You know, and the best diet is the one you can follow. It, you know, I I read about diets all the time, but it se it seems for longevity, the Mediterranean diet seems to be like one of the ones high on the list. Mm -hmm. You know, and you know the people in Okinawa. They they live unusually long lives. Um, they eat very light, very little. You know, their main thing is to leave the table still feeling hungry a little bit. Yeah, you know, oh, that's eat. Cool. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, the, these are very very important things to consider yeah. because once you get fat, it's really hard to get the fat off, and once you get over forty, losing the weight becomes harder and harder and harder. Mm -hmm. So. Anyone wanting a long, healthy life needs to get the weight off now, yeah. and forget about, you know, doing high-intensity interval training and you know all this stuff. That's not going to work. You can out eat any exercise program, no matter how good. Yeah. But th the exercise diet doesn't really matter as long as you can live with it. <coughs> I would recommend not eating um, refined carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. And also a lot of the fast food, the uh, the uh, the vegetable oils and things like this, yeah. you know, staying away from that and making the base of your diet fruits and vegetables. Yeah, because like one thing you see in the blue zones like Okinawa, and we also have a blue zone in Greece. Uh, basically, there's not a, a same diet. You know, people it's not like people eat a lot of meat or don't eat no, meat at all because you know you have the Okinawan people who eat very little if no meat at all you have other people in the like in Greece who eat a lot of it but like the most common thing you see is that people don't overeat you know people move more and eat Back. less and that's move the key more. I yeah and yeah uh, a lot of the, a lot of a lot of the folks that I've looked at you know <clears throat> in these longevity studies are having two meals a day. Mm -hmm. And they have the chief meal early, you know, like usually about between noon and two o'clock. And then they'll have a light supper. Yeah. And not have a big, big meal before going to bed, you know? Yeah. And um, I I'm pretty big in fasting, you know, like if I don't feel well or I start to feel ill, I will immediately fast. And fasting is the, the, fa the quick road to Uh, recovery from any kind of illness, cold, flu, whatever, you know. I'm also a big fan of fasting. Uh, nowadays, I also eat two meals a day. Uh, you know, I focus on getting a lot of protein because that keeps me full. And uh, it's 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 about following the basics, but being consistent with them because, you know, you can see in statistics that people after their 30s start to gain, uh, start to lose, first of all, about 1% of muscle mass per year and start to gain also more fat. And I don't really believe that that's because, you know, your metabolism is slowing down. We even have research nowadays that your metabolism doesn't really change that much until 60, but uh, it's because we move less and we eat more, right? People get more sedentary, they commute more. So they even sit when they're move when they're commuting. Uh, their job has a lot of mental stress, but no physical stress, no healthy physical stress. And, uh, you know, that adds up uh, slowly. That fat becomes more stubborn fat because you also probably sleep less, you stress more. And, you know, these are all factors that come into play. And uh, I tell people that, you know, it's not the, the fact that you have a few new gray hair and that you turn 30 or 40 is not an excuse to gain weight. And you, you even say this in your article, you say like one of the things you do have control over is your level of body fat. That is one thing you do have control. You can't control, you know, your proportions, your bone lengths, you know, bone length ratios, you know, your uh, your propensity for muscle mass. I mean, that's all pretty, pretty much genetic. But um, yeah, you do have control over your over your your body leanness to a point. I mean, not everyone can get like uh, 
the leanness of a like a, a fitness model, but <laughs> Bruce Lee lean or yeah, Bruce Lee lean, you know. But you know, one one of the dirty secrets in the fitness industry, those models do not look like that all the time. Exactly. Yeah, you know, they do these photo shoots with special lighting, and they they uh, they they just diet like crazy for a couple of weeks with water manipulation in the skin mm. and uh, you know special oils special lighting uh nowadays they even you they even uh, um manipulate the photography you know yeah they, they do all sorts of things with the with the photo itself and you don't even it. need to be a professional nowadays you know as long as you have an instagram account and a computer and a, a basic idea of photo editing And that's a, that's a huge problem for young people, you know, that look up to people on social media stars, you know, and uh, you build this idea that, you know, that's how they look the whole year. And uh, this creates a lot of psychological problems, I believe. It really does. I met some of these folks and it was like, they're pretty normal looking individuals, you know, they, uh, but uh, there was one guy, uh, uh, social media guy that did it before and after in 10 minutes difference <laughs> yeah and it was unbelievable the before right yeah i mean it looked okay but man the after was like whoa and mm. it was 10 minute time lapse between the two photos all he did was change the lighting yeah. and uh the shadows and uh just flex his body a little bit different put a little oil on and it was like my god it looked like it was a huge difference but in reality it was a 10 minute time lapse between the photographs so it's important and the reason I'm, we're talking about this it's important that people have realistic goals mm -hmm. and not to set goals that are so far out there that they could never possibly make it because that's just going to end up in disappointment and disappointment usually ends up in not training anymore yeah so it's important to set a realistic goal for yourself and i i don't think setting goals for like i want to do 20 pull-ups or 50 push-ups are good goals. I, I I think the kind of goal should be more like I want to work out uh, st strength training three days a week. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm I'm going to um, eat a clean diet and then list the food that you want to eat as opposed to you know make a make a diet plan. Yeah. And you know, a lot of people have no clue. So there's plenty of plans out there online. Mm -hmm. tons of tons of programs just pick one that you think you can follow yeah and then just be active every day you know like yeah. you said sitting is like the new smoking is they said yeah i mean it really does deform the body shorten hip flexors shorten hamstrings forward head type body curve so a lot of the time spent should be correcting these postural imbalances Like getting up from your chair, marching around, shaking, you know, uh, putting your foot up in the desk and stretching out your hamstrings and, you know, just moving around. I set like little timers for myself even. Every hour on the hour, I'll get up and I will, I don't know if you can see me or not, I use this Qigong mm -hmm. technique where, can you see my body? Yeah. And I'll just start to shake. Yeah. My heels aren't coming off the floor. It's called mm -hmm. intuitive Qigong, and it's or fascial unwinding, and it's a very gentle way to stimulate your cardiovascular system. You get lymphatic return, yeah. you get the venous return back to the right atrium of the heart, and you just move your body, and then you start to intuitively just move different positions, trying to loosen up all the tightness in your body, and then I'll just march in place, just marching. Yeah. 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 Like cross crawl, right? Uh, you know, uh, right, left, left, right. Yeah. And yeah. this will go on all day. And I try, you know, I, I wear a, a Fitbit watch mm -hmm. and I, I'll get 11,000 steps a day. Yeah. But it doesn't have to be stepped. The shaking is the same as a step. Yeah. I mean, if I shake my body, it's the same energy as a step. And, uh, you know, I, uh, I'll just make sure I'm active and moving around. And there there have been days I've been so busy, I, I don't even leave this little tiny house. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a really small little house. 
and I'll still get 11,000 steps in a day, just <laughs> moving. And I don't know whether you can see it or not, but uh, you can see my pull-up bar. Yes, nice. On my loft, and I'll, you know, so I, I have the ability to uh, actually work out in my little tiny house without even, but of course I'm very big in going out and, in, into nature and breathing the fresh air and you know doing breath exercises yeah yeah getting yeah. a good walk in every day but uh yeah there's days i get really busy mm -hmm. or the weather is just so incredibly horrible that uh i get lazy and i don't feel like going out yeah uh, i, I can relate to that because uh same here like i found myself this year sitting a lot uh, because I also stopped doing coaching uh, person to person and I started working a lot more online and I, I noticed that I was getting less steps, I was moving less. So what I did is uh, I also got a smartwatch and uh, what I do is I take it off when I train because I don't want to include my steps when I train. Now I want to get 10,000 steps aside from the steps I get when I train. Ah. Because, you know, working out is an hour a day, but uh, if you're sitting less, uh, the other 23 hours you know it doesn't really make a big difference we need to move and when people ask me what is the number one bodyweight exercise like if you could do only one what would you do and i always say like in the moment walking you know you need to walk if you don't walk i mean i'd rather have you doing 20,000 steps per day than doing like a little strength workout and nothing else yeah i, I kind of agree with that because i mean from a longevity point of view, if you look at the people in the blue zones, they don't work out. <laughs> they, don't, they don't have chips, no. right? No. <laughs> no, no, no. They're, they're, they're very active people. You know, a lot of them are uh, herdsmen. You know, with uh, you know, they they have animals that they like animal husbandry, sheep and goats and stuff like that. Yeah. But I, I do believe that uh, strength training is very important. Oh yeah, totally, totally. But uh, you know, first but of here, all, you here, should move. You should walk. You, you don't need a lot of it. I mean, yeah. once a week, if, if people would just train, train, and just do like the big six, you know, mm -hmm. like a push, pull, push, pull, and a squat, and uh, something for their back, they would be so far above people that don't work out at all. It, it would be like amazing. Yeah. It, it doesn't take a big time commitment to get a good strength workout, especially with your body weight. That's one really topic I want to ask you a lot about uh, training frequency and training volume. So 